Welcome back, everyone. I now have the pleasure of sitting down with our Executive Vice President of Database Engineering, Hassan Rizvi. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, okay, to start here, what do you hope our attendees here at Cloud World Tour Dubai take away from your keynote today? So in the database, our database strategy is really focused on how we are removing complexity and a lot of work from our customers, which really reduces their costs significantly. It enables them to go to market faster and it results in a better solution, it lowers their operational risk because this solution is more available, more secure and more resilient. Okay, I want to kind of peel that back a little bit and start at the beginning. What are the top challenges our customers are facing when it comes to data management? So if you look at the enterprise today, the data lives in three, four, sometimes five different types of databases. There are relational databases, JSON databases, graph databases, data warehouses, data lakes. And while the application, the person who's using the application sees a nice screen which has all the data on it, there's a lot of complexity that has to be dealt with to make that happen. Developers have to navigate this maze on a daily basis. IT departments have to struggle with securing and managing this uh, sprawl, if you will. And you know, our customers' best minds are really spending their days trying to you know, run the system instead of doing the business innovation. Right. So that's, that's the challenge. Uh, I, I, should, I, I should add, now they have to worry about adding AI to this mix. And AI comes with its own new database. Right. So they have to do the work to engineer that into their existing environment. And that's kind of what we see as the big challenges our customers face. So how is Oracle looking to simplify this? So what happens, the reason this complexity exists is because each component is kind of separately developed and it, it goes to our customers to have to you know, make it work together. So if you have a new component that comes in, you have to figure out how to secure it, how to make the data management, how to uh, operate it. At Oracle, we are engineering these components to, together at Oracle because we want to remove that complexity. We want to do it once at Oracle and make that available to our customer so that they can then, if something new happens, it's already layered in because we've done the work. Right, right. Now, part of that is our recent announcement around Exadata X11M, right? Can yes. you tell our Can you tell our audience a bit about that and the benefits our customers will see with it? So one of the things that we've done for many years is also engineer the hardware and software together. Right. Because you know, hardware obviously keeps improving and we can take better advantage of it if we engineer it, engineer it together. So we've developed Exadata many years ago, very popular, right. lots of mission critical applications in the world use it. Uh, and so X11M is the latest release. We, every year we release, or approximately every year we release a new model. And, and really it continues the tradition of really improving the performance and availability and recovery. Uh, and it takes advantage of the latest hardware, right. processors, memory, networking, and really delivers extremely high performance. And it, you know, it kind of raises the bar both relative to the older versions of Exadata, but also relative to its competition, which is open hardware or other you know cloud um, uh, you know services. Right. And on the software side, we've also done a lot of improvements, better support for AI with vector searches, better power management. Power is a big deal mm -hmm. because uh, you know of, of 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 how much it consumes. So we've done a lot of work to improve the power management, uh, as well as recovery times because again it's very focused on mission critical attributes. Right, a lot of benefits there. Um, okay, so switching gears, another big announcement is multi-cloud running Oracle Autonomous Database in all of the biggest cloud providers including AWS, Google, and Azure. Can you tell us why are we focusing on this right now and again, what benefits do our customers see from it? So our customers have been asking for this and of course it's taken us a little time because we wanted to en engineer it so that we can ensure that the performance is there and all the you know mission critical attributes. But really our customers are choosing their public clouds based on what they would like to have in their environment. We have customers who like to run their app, uh, you know, infrastructure or applications in Azure, in Google, uh, in AWS. And what this now allows them is to take the Oracle database and run it in those clouds. And right. with that, move their applications over, which use the Oracle database. And again, we've done a lot of the work to make sure that this performs really well. Right. So it's really all about giving our customers flexibility. The other thing that I would mention is that you can, our customers can use the cloud credits they have with these vendors. They have contracts and they have you know, commitments with these vendors. Now you can, they can use uh, those uh, uh, to pay for the Oracle services as well. Right. Okay, now let's talk Database 23AI. Can you tell us about some of the 
biggest innovations coming out of that? So 23 AI is a major release which we do every few years. It's got, I think, 300, you know, over 300 different yeah. capabilities. A big focus was AI. AI right. is obviously front of mind with, with, with the type of promise that it has in terms of you know, helping our customers with their businesses. So we've really focused 23 AI on the AI components. Uh, vector uh, database or vector support for vectors and vector search is one capability. Um, being able to select uh, uh, using natural language, so select AI, which you can use natural language to query the database. Uh, we have, um, you know, we have support for open standards like Onyx, uh, frameworks like Langchain to enable our customers to, to you know, to, to develop, you know, very quickly. Exadata, as I mentioned, has new capabilities to increase the performance. And then, you know, from a, you know, from a developer perspective, it's really focused on how we enable customers. So data engineers can have machine learning models and algorithms built in. Mm -hmm. So it's really, you know, really helping our customers get to their, you know, promise of AI. And our strategy really has been around bringing AI to the database or to your data as opposed to having to take the data out right. and then have the complexity that it entails. Right, which is a differentiator for us, really. Absolutely, we don't want our customers to have to take everything out and move it and create the complexity. We'll bring all the AI capabilities to their data. Right, um, I want to hit on a couple different areas that you just talked about. One of those being AI vector search, um, being a huge component of 23AI. Can you tell us how is this helping our customers run queries easier and faster? So traditionally, relational databases have been really good at you know supporting structured content uh, uh, purchase orders right. dates uh, numbers and being able to search them and these are exact matches you look for a purchase order which has this number uh, what relational databases have not been good at is being able to search through unstructured or human uh, generated content right. like documents and p images, and that's a big part of what applications uh, you know deal with these days. So, what a vector allows uh, you to do is to be able to represent the semantic meaning of objects, of documents, of images. So, for example, if you have two pictures of cats, it will create the semantic meaning that this is a picture of a cat, it's a brown colored cat, it's indoors. So now, once you do that, you can now do similarity searches and you can say, hey, give me all the pictures of cats, and it knows how to compare these images and give you all the pictures of cats, give me all the pictures of cats that are outdoor, et cetera, et cetera. So it really allows you to now do similarity searches on mm -hmm. human-centric data as mm. opposed to just structured data. And you also hit on RAG. How are we enabling RAG application development. So RAG, which stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation, is a very popular, uh, uh, you know, use case, if you will, which allows people to develop chatbots and mm -hmm. you know various kinds of agents. And and the way that typically works is that you have to take your data out from wherever it is, give it to a vector database to convert it to vectors, and then have the LLM or the large language model uh, use those uh, vectors or th that representation to be able to do a query with what we now enable is that your data stays in the database and you can basically use the database with vector representation of your data as just another column in your table. And now when you build your RAG, let's say a customer service agent, which is trying to answer questions on the most common problems and it has a whole bunch of documents it needs to search. Now you can do that without having to move the data and just give that uh, uh, vector representation or the top matches to the large language module di directly from the database. Wow, again, just a, a huge efficient efficiency gain there. Um, okay, finally, the last area that I, want, I wanted to hit on was GenDev. Um, you talked about like some of these, th this being uh, groundbreaking and having groundbreaking technologies involved in this. Tell me a little bit about what we're doing to evolve data um, development and app dev to be more AI-centric. So. You know, there's obviously there's a big promise right now of uh, AI helping generate or develop applications. And all the examples you'll see, what I would call are kind of simpler applications. Enterprise applications have a much higher set of requirements and security, consistency, right. reliability. And, and uh, uh, you know, large language models are not good necessarily at being able to do that. They end up hallucinating, they end up making up stuff. So what we are focused on is how do we enable enterprises to do enterprise application development using AI, which means breaking the problem down and really leveraging the AI for what it's really good at and having humans support it with what humans do really well. Right. So GenDev is basically our way of supporting that and creating a, you know, giving our developers an extremely, uh, you know, efficient way of matching the capabilities and the power of an LLM with what 
people do best. Right. We're getting to the point of just application development and the click of a button here. <laughs> we, 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 we hope so. Yeah. We, we hope so. One day. Yeah. Well, thank you, Hassan, so much for joining us here today at Cloud World Tour Dubai. Thank you so much for having me.